How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the most recent discoveries about the central black hole right here in the Milky Way galaxy. And the discoveries from the central galactic region where the black hole, also known as Sagittarius A star, is located. And that's because in the last few months there's been quite a few different discoveries, with the most recent discovery from the James Webb Space Telescope actually seeing something for the first time ever and potentially explaining the mystery of black hole flares. And so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail, starting with something we've actually discussed previously, but somewhat briefly, but basically a discovery coming from the center of the galaxy generated by the black hole itself. And this was actually a really bizarre discovery of massive clouds of gas that were all actually blasted away from the center of the Milky Way and moving really fast in two separate directions with many of these gas clouds representing material from the central region and potentially created by the black hole emissions or maybe by various types of starburst activity that sometimes happen in this region as well. Either way though, it was actually bizarre to find so many of these really massive, very large clouds moving extremely fast away from the galaxy, in many cases at over 400 kilometers per second. And some of these gas clouds were moving faster than any other cloud we've seen anywhere. But intriguingly enough, they didn't just contain hydrogen, they also seem to contain more complex molecules and somewhat dense cold gas that we actually often associate with things like, for example, planets, which suggested some kind of an extremely violent ejection from the center of the Milky Way, but not violent enough and not powerful enough to destroy these molecules or to destroy the density of these clouds, which suggests that back in the days, possibly millions of years ago, there was a lot of violent activity in the center of the Milky Way galaxy, very likely coming from Sagittarius A star. And we can actually combine these observations with various observations in radio light, which is actually something that was done in the study you can find in the description, which will suddenly reveal additional details in regards to magnetic fields in this region as well. And so in the last few months, researchers have also analyzed the magnetic field in order to discover potential relationship between various types of dust and various types of gas in this region and the magnetic fields that are probably guiding this gas, which can actually then result in star formation or even in the feeding of the black hole. So basically, as we know from some of the previous discoveries from other galaxies, the magnetic fields will actually often feed the black hole by constantly supplying a lot of gas and a lot of dust, which then falls into the central region and essentially causes the black holes to awaken and to start producing powerful emissions. And so here, trying to find the exact relationship, and especially how this works in the Milky Way, one day will help us understand the evolution of the galaxy, and thus the evolution of various stars, maybe even answering the questions of the origins of life. But because the central galactic region, or the central molecular zone, actually contains 60 million solar masses of dust, trying to analyze all of this and trying to see how all of this works is obviously a little bit complicated. But a few months back, researchers were able to create this map, showing us a lot of hot gas in pink, cool dust in blue, and a lot of radio-emitting filaments in yellow. And also discovering that the magnetic fields, and especially their direction, seems to actually vary across the clouds, and seems to be in different directions, depending on where they are. And so exactly how this works right now is a bit of a mystery. This is not as simple as some kind of a magnetic field around planet Earth or around a typical star. But there were also some additional observations using the Chandra X-ray telescope that allowed researchers to also discover a lot of super hot gas that might be produced through different means as well. And so here, by observing this in the X-rays, scientists discovered several unusual structures, structures containing very hot gas, that seemed to contain certain regions where this gas was violently escaping from something else, producing really bizarre, very straight structures, with gas moving super fast. And here, this actually seems to be part of a much larger structure that's almost tunnel-like in shape, or is possibly shaped like some kind of a cylinder, extending across for several hundred light years, with Sagittarius A black hole in the center. And this very bizarre structure seems to funnel a lot of gas, a lot of really hot gas, possibly away from the black hole, through the mechanism that we still don't understand, but it looks like in certain regions of this bizarre tunnel, there are certain locations that the researchers refer to as chimneys that seem to vent a lot of this hot gas all at once, with the one that you see right here being approximately 700 light years away from the central black hole. And though it's not entirely clear where this gas is coming from, 
is believed to be the result of material that fell into the black hole that eventually produced enough energy to eject a lot of gas, forcing all of this gas in this tunnel, which then escaped through this chimney. And this seems to be correlated with the X-ray flares that scientists believe happen around Sagittarius A star every 200 years or so. During this time, enormous amount of emissions produce huge amounts of X-ray radiation, which then very often reflects from the plasma around the black hole and then becomes visible as these very bright, hot echoes. And so a lot of these X-ray flares also seem to drive a lot of this gas upwards, with some of this gas escaping through the chimneys. But exactly what produced these flares and exactly how they work was always a bit of a mystery. But this mystery might sort of be resolved now through the observations from the James Webb. And specifically the most recent observations and the most recent study, in this case by Sebastiano von Fallenberg, that was just released in January of 2025. This was the first ever observations of Sagittarius A star in mid-infrared light. Or to be more exact, it was the first detection of a flare in the mid-infrared light that was then followed by radio emissions that allowed scientists to explain what's happening. This actually happened back in April of 2024, but it did take some time to explain and to analyze. And so here, by using MIRI on top of the James Webb Space Telescope, researchers observed a very unusual flare coming from a Sagittarius A star that was actually evolving in just a matter of hours. Now, because Sagittarius A star is considered to be a relatively quiet black hole, at least nowadays, seeing any flare here is usually kind of exciting. But because, as I mentioned, we don't really understand what causes these flares and why some of these flares become so much brighter than other flares, that's what the researchers wanted to understand by conducting these additional observations in other wavelengths. What you're seeing here, for example, is actually the X-ray emissions detected from a flare in 2015. But the modeling and the simulations explained all of this as a result of magnetic field snapping, or specifically the interaction between magnetic field lines and the accretion disk that causes certain field lines get close enough together, making them join and releasing huge amounts of energy that can then be seen as synchrotron emissions basically charged particles suddenly accelerating and producing certain wavelengths. And so the radiation emitted through the snapping of these magnetic lines is what we usually observe as a kind of a flare. These are usually formed by magnetic lines closest to the black hole itself and the ones that are usually most entangled. And a very similar process is also believed to be responsible for the production of the jet. But here the magnetic lines and the field itself is much, much stronger. And so for Sagittarius A star, because the black hole is much more quiet and doesn't contain as much material in the accretion disk, previous models established that we're only going to be seeing flares and very likely flares in specific wavelengths. But it was actually the observations in the mid-infrared that were kind of missing in order to provide needed evidence. And because now, for the first time ever, researchers captured a mid-infrared flare, it became possible to finally figure out what's happening here. Here, this flare lasted for approximately 40 minutes and was surprisingly then followed by another flare visible in the radio light. Nothing was actually visible in the X-rays or gamma rays, and that's very likely because the electrons here were not accelerating fast enough and were only producing emissions in the infrared and in radio light. But 10 minutes after the infrared emissions, radio emissions were detected as well which basically implied that it was probably coming from the same event, and the only explanation that kind of made sense was the one involving electrons that were accelerated by the magnetic fields, and specifically through the magnetic line reconnection, and were then cooling down by releasing all of these flares visible in the infrared. Here this even allowed us to measure the magnetic field, which seems to be approximately 40 to 70 Gauss, which is roughly around 100 times stronger than the magnetic field of planet Earth, but surprisingly is somewhat similar to what we actually observe around the Sun. And so in some sense this flare was actually kind of similar to a typical coronal mass ejection that's actually caused by a very similar magnetic line reconnection. And so around the Sun something very similar happens all the time and is also the result of magnetic fields and magnetic lines reconnecting once in a while. And so here we basically have an official confirmation that a lot of flares around black holes seem to form through magnetic line reconnection. And depending on the strength of the reconnection and the strength of electrons released, it will basically result in different energies and flares observable in different wavelengths. 
And so lots of different pretty exciting discoveries coming from the center of the galaxy and from the central black hole, but obviously also still a lot of mysteries and still a lot of unanswered questions. But in the last few years we've had so many different discoveries and different observations of Sagittarius A star that have actually surprised everyone and managed to answer so many questions. You can learn about some of these discoveries in videos in the description, but even the image itself of the central black hole is a relatively recent achievement. Which means that in the next few months, and especially in the next few years, we'll have even more discoveries and very likely incredible discoveries, many of which we cannot even imagine. And so until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.